Hello and welcome back to Liberty Art Reviews. Today I'm at Mercedes-Benz of McKinney who have graciously allowed me to review this 2024 Mercedes-Benz AMG EQE SUV, a vehicle that is a slap in the face to test the Model Y. Mercedes-Benz of McKinney is located in McKinney, Texas and is absolutely beautiful uh, and they've got some amazing vehicles on display and the sales team and both the managing team along with the service department is very nice and opening. Without further ado, let's break this vehicle down and complete our review. Now the front fascia on the AMG EQV SUV is a big step up from say the EQE 500 SUV or even the EQE 350 Plus SUV. Now what I like most about this AMG is that you have the Uffelterbach AMG crest embedded into the hood instead of just a regular Mercedes emblem. We do although have the Mercedes emblem in the front faceted on the beautiful Panamericana grille. We have the Mercedes digital light on this vehicle, meaning that it does do dances when you turn the vehicle on. I'll show you that uh, in a moment. And then we have the DRLs along with the high beams and the amber turn strip and the turn strip on the top turns amber when you have the turn signal enabled. The center is a light bar which I quite like. It adds a little bit of character to the front end of this vehicle which the lower trims lack in terms of front end styling. We have fake vents on both sides although we do have the parking sensors embedded in them and then this square light over here is for the front tow hook. Uh, if you need to attach that in the event of an emergency. We have uh, induction vents right over here. These go directly into the motor and the battery to cool them both down. The hood has uh, the classic GLE uh, hood styling. So you have the two body lines going into the A pillars and then the, the two center ones. I quite like this front end design. I believe that and it is a much better looking vehicle in comparison to the Tesla Model Y. Pretty much all modern Mercedes come with keyless go, so I have the key in my pocket, put my hand next to the door handle, illuminated door handles, which is always nice, pull on them. As you can see, we also have additional illuminated entry on the door sill. No Mercedes emblem or AMG spewing onto the floor, which honestly I'm happy about because in my opinion it looks a little bit tacky when you have that option. Difficult to close doors. Tap to close. Mirrors fold in as well. All right, let's talk powertrain. Now this vehicle is a dual motor setup because it has the 4Matic Plus all-wheel drive system that is known to be really well designed for all Mercedes AMG vehicles. Now this has a 90.6 kilowatt hour battery attached to both of those motors and it produces an insane 617 horsepower and 701 pound-feet of torque. That's actually crazy and if you compare it to the Tesla Model Y performance, it's a lot faster. Now with all of this combined, you get to 60 in around 3.4 to 3.6 seconds depending on the conditions. And that's actually staggeringly fast considering that this is an electric vehicle and it wastes a substantial amount. Now let's talk about the tires. Now we have the traditional Mercedes-Benz AMG Y-spoke wheels which look phenomenal on all the other ones. But these are the electrified version of those which help with the range and overall performance. And these are 275 millimeters in width and 21 inches in diameter. It's a square setup so all the tires are the same. Now these tires are the Michelin Pilot Sport EVs. They're pretty much Pilot Sport 4s, but they're designed to handle the amount of torque and horsepower that this vehicle generates, considering that this is instant torque and not something that a um, regular motor produces in the terms of just getting it to go. Now you want to know what the charging is. Obviously it's an electric vehicle, so this has the 170 kilowatt uh, fast charging enabled on it, which means that you'll get 100 miles every 15 minutes and this vehicle can give you up to 269 miles of range on a full charge. It's a performance vehicle uh, and that's why the range is so low and the battery is a little bit smaller. Usually the Mercedes EQE has the 120 kilowatt, sorry, the EQS has the 120 kilowatt hour battery, but this is uh, a little bit smaller and because of that you're going to spend maybe 20 to 25 to 30 minutes 
at the charging station when you have to charge this thing up considering that the charging station actually works now another thing is that this hood doesn't open so you want to know where to fill your washer fluid and that is right over here give it a little push when the car is unlocked and you fill it right up in here Now the rear end for this vehicle is absolutely gorgeous. I like the rear end on the Mercedes EVs. I like these LED tail lights and how they've got this fin design like the AMG Black Series. And we've got the additional fins on the bottom with the reverse lights right over here. AMG in chrome, Mercedes emblem in chrome, which also doubles as your backup camera and the trunk release. We have the EQE badge on the right side of the lower portion features, the chrome diffuser as well as the red reflectors courtesy of US regulations. We have the rear parking sensors which is always great and overall it's just a very handsome looking and sporty and bold looking rear end. Popping the trunk you can see that we have the additional tonneau cover, a tire inflation kit, the first aid kit as well as the tow hook for the front end in the event of a collision. Now let's get on with the trunk test. This does not have the uh, rear end uh, lift system, which helps it actually reduce the right height on the back so you can get it uh, lower in the rear to help load stuff. This one doesn't have it, even though it has the uh, air ride suspension. Although I will say that this is a trunk test pass, but I do feel that trunk size could have been a little bit bigger if they did extend the wheelbase. But that's okay because the EQS SUV uh, is already on its way to be AMG-ified and I'm sure that'll fix the issue. One thing I especially like is the key it shows AMG on the top. This is the lock, this is unlock, trunk open, and the back it says AMG. Beautiful. Now, rear seat comfort is really important when you're buying an AMG vehicle, let alone a Mercedes vehicle as well. And with the rear seats, it's also important because you're not always going to be the one uh, to be in the vehicle while driving you're gonna have people in it as well what i like most about this spec is that we have the natural napa leather with the brown leather on the top and i think it looks really good especially paired with the red ambient lighting this has 64 different color uh, options available to you and there's also a multicolor option which is nice we have the brewmaster 3d high-end surround system which is absolutely amazing uh, it handles bass really well and compared to harman kardon it's a definite step up I like the fact that we have aluminum right over here. It makes it feel more premium than plastic. And speaking of plastic, there's a lot of fake leather plastic on the rear, but the front end is the opposite because everything in the front is either metal, glass, piano black, wood, or leather. And it's absolutely phenomenal. I like the amount of quality the Mercedes-Benz has put in the front of the vehicle although the rear could use a little bit of a step up. I like that I have a really good amount of foot room as well as knee room. Headroom is a lot better in this than it was in the EQS or the EQE, although I haven't used, uh, I haven't reviewed the EQS SUV yet. We have two air vents back here and a center console to hold drinks and uh, some smaller things that you'd want to st set up in here which is always nice and overall it's a really comfy seat it's a bit upright for my liking as a rear seat and it's not too well bolstered for an amg vehicle but it gets the job done it's going to be really comfortable especially with that air suspension now we are in the driver's seat of the amg eqe suv i've got to say it's really comfortable these seats are extremely well bolstered they hold me by the hips really nicely the back is comfortable, it's not stiff, and I have both heated and cooled seats in this. Not the massage seats because that's an option, but I do have cooled seats, which is always a plus. One thing I really love about Mercedes AMG vehicles is the flat bottom steering wheel with the drive control units, which I can show you right now after turning the vehicle on. And you can see completely silent, we have the animations on the drive select units. I can also change everything with here so for example if i wanted to put this into ice mode individual sport or sport plus i can do that with a touch of a button i can change the individual suspension settings because of the airmatic and i can also turn traction control off with just my thumb now 
I didn't initially like when this steering wheel was unveiled, but it's definitely grown on me, especially with the flat bottom. I think it works. It helps separate your screen controls. This one right here controls this screen. This one right here controls the screen. And then you have the uh, radar cruise control option right over here, as well as all of your music and call system settings. The, the steering wheel also has AMG embossed into the metal on the bottom, which is absolutely beautiful. I really like the way that the driving position feels. I have pretty much no blind spots. I love these uh, these vents right over here, although they don't click like they used to, but they definitely look a lot better. We have the backlit Mercedes emblem dashboard, and I think that's a good option, although I prefer the regular wood or even the flowing lines trim a lot more. The air vent lining is in rose gold, and I think that was a very unique option um, that Mercedes always puts in their EQ vehicles. And honestly, I think it looks pretty good. We have the seat controls over here. They're pretty much haptic. They don't really move lock and unlock on the door as well. More of that wired aluminum finish on the left side of the door. We have our light settings where they always are, as well as the parking brake on the left where it always is in Mercedes vehicles. This infotainment system has definitely been updated. We have wireless CarPlay, which is a huge blessing, especially in modern Mercedes vehicles. Once we go into the system settings, I've already done an in-depth review with this. So obviously uh, we know a lot about it. If you wanna know more, I am going to link a, the, I'm gonna link one of my other videos where I go more in depth in the system, but I'll show you the important things. So we have 88% battery right now and it's showing about 208 miles of range. Um, that can go up again, like I said, to 269 miles of range. We have the socket flap, so where the uh, charge, where the battery charger plugs in, we can turn on eco charging. That pretty much just slows it down and stops right about at 85% to uh, increase battery health. We have the previous consumption. This vehicle really hasn't been driven too much, so there's nothing really there. With the air suspension, we can also press the dynamic button to change all of our settings like put snow tires on, raise and lower the vehicle. We have downhill speed regulation because for some reason they want you to off-road this vehicle if you desire. We have the roll as well as the angle of elevation or depression. We can open up our cameras as you can see, absolutely phenomenal. We can also open them through this P button right over here. If I go back, push this button, there you go, the uh, distorted EQ SUV in front of me, the S500 on the left, and then absolutely destroyed looking SL60 or SL55. As you can see, we have 3D cameras. That SL starts to look a little bit better, but in terms of relative position, this is extremely accurate. Although I do prefer having the actual cameras, so I am 100% confident as to where I am maneuvering my vehicle. Now we can also press the. We can also press the AMG dynamic select mode and we can change all of our system settings. So for example, if I put it in individual mode, I can choose how I want my drive mode to be, how I want my suspension to be set up and how I want the sound to be projected on the outside or the inside. And I think that's a great way to do it. Although I will always just drive in Sport Plus because that's the way to do it in an AMG. We also have a fingerprint sensor. If you have multiple profiles on this NBX system, you can just sign in with your fingerprint. I don't know what to do. You can also just simply turn the display off and have a more relaxed and subdued driving experience. The center screen, again, like I've always been over, you have the multiple different styles for how you want inf information to be displayed. And I think that this works really well. It's really easy to use, really intuitive and it doesn't distract you from the outside the leather in this smells absolutely phenomenal it's extremely soft and it feels really good this feels almost like suede even though it is real leather as well as this black stuff over here as well the top has the sunroof controls this has a panoramic sunroof the front opens and it can go back and i think it's absolutely great overall a 10 out of 10 experience in the interior let's go for a drive Another thing to note is that there is no transmission tunnel, so we have additional storage with two USB-C ports in the front, right over there, as well as this center console. Pretty deep, again, no transmission tunnel. This is also cooled by the air conditioning. Then we have this centerpiece right over here, two adjustable cup holders, 
wireless charging pad and a place to put your key as well as two additional USB-C chargers although we don't really need that anymore because we have wireless CarPlay. Here we are driving the AMG EQE SUV and right off the bat the rear wheel steering on this really helps it decrease the turning radius which I love and I wanted to say that the ride is a lot softer than I anticipated. This car has been in Sport Plus the entire ride and I still felt like it was a little bit too soft for an AMG vehicle. I understand that it is more of a comfortable SUV but still uh, in Sport Plus I feel that the adaptive dampeners could have been a little bit more stiff. Steering however is really nice, it's really responsive, it's a little bit light for my preference again, it's not like the uh, C63 or anything, but it, it does handle really well, it also drives really nicely, it's super silent, uh, but in Sport Plus you get this additional acoustic noise to show off its sporty presence. Now we're going to do race start momentarily, so I'm just going to let you enjoy that and stop talking, overall it's a great driving vehicle, and honestly I think it drives better than any of its competition ever could. Again, rear wheel steering with this, really small turning radius. Hits 80 like no other, absolutely blistering experience and the seat belt tightens once you engage race start or launch control. And that is the complete review on the 2024 Mercedes AMG EQE SUV. In my opinion, it's a phenomenal vehicle. You're getting a top of the line AMG for $105,000. Now, this may sound a lot for an EV, and sure it might be, but when I compare it to something like Audi's uh, electric crossover thing. Yeah, I might have spoken too soon on that because the fully optioned out Audi SQ8 e-tron is the exact same price as the AMG EQE that I spec'd out and this I'm probably going to go head to head with an AMG EQS in the future maybe but the AMG EQE SUV is a lot more powerful than this and I feel that the design on this may be a little bit better but the overall package that you're getting with the AMG is actually better and uh, might as well just throw in a comparison with the Tesla Model Y performance. Now it's $20,000 cheaper, but it just doesn't look the par, as well as the fact that it is uh, pretty much on the same performance level. Although I wouldn't even look at the Tesla because the build quality on those is horrendous. I think the AMG is the way to go 100%. Now a lot of people will say that this isn't a real AMG. And they're going to say that because it's of the electric motor, and I'm going to dispute that. I think it's a real AMG at heart, but it's a fake AMG in the sense that it's not completely built in Germany. Now, the entire drive trim assembly is built in Germany, but everything else is made in Alabama. So that begs the question, is it really an AMG or not? If you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, make sure you stop by Mercedes-Benz of McKinney. Their team is excellent and will most definitely take care of you. Big shout out to them and a major thank you to them as well for allowing me to film vehicles here. I absolutely love them. And that is all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please do consider subscribing and remember to keep on driving.